The Cycling World Cup 97 is brought to you by Licha Pilsner. It's round five in the World Cup and the riders now moved into Holland, a little uh, conky bit down in the south-east uh, corner uh, surrounding Maastricht, having started out here in this morning. And right from the gun, we had action all the way. A breakaway group of three riders, Frederick Cabesse for the casino team, Fabio Raschioli of the Azix team and John Charlin from the Foral Dorado golf team uh, set off uh, and after 50 kilometres they managed pr to prime some uh, uh, prime some daylight between themselves and uh, the uh, the main pack. You look at him now, about to be caught there and before we pick up those riders, that is a position on the World Cup today. Bartoli and Sorensen and sackcloth of ashes, I got it wrong didn't I? Last week in the Age Baston Age, I said Sorensen was still in the lead. It came a quick flash during our break, and they put him up on the top of the chart. I didn't notice, in fact, that uh, Bartoli had, uh, had got equal points on. So that's it. And here we see these three riders now about to be caught after a breakaway, which at one time had a lead after 127 kilometres of 7 minutes and 20 seconds. He's coming down all the time. MG, as you'd expect, with... Uh, their man, Bartoli, in the white jersey, as leader on the World Cup, been doing some chasing, together with Telecom, who will be very sprightly today, and they have now pulled that back, that gap, uh, which is a one time, 7 minutes and 20 seconds. So it's going to be anybody's race. It's a very, very conky race, by the way, the Amstel Gold, covering 258 kilometres. It's a 30-second issue of this great race, and the Dutch uh, hoping, I think, perhaps to get a victory. They haven't had one for an awful long time now, but they're going to have to go some because there's a lot of top-class riders in this field today. Uh, of the top 20 riders in the U-side classification, we have no less than 16 of them riding in the race today. And uh, as this is the, um, the, the, the big final of the uh, World Cups, when I call final, we've, we've got the breaks coming up now, the Tour de France and the Tour of Italy and the Tour of Spain and so on. We don't really come back towards the back end of the year with the race uh, for the World Cup. So really, this is the one when who's going to decide that takes that white jersey into the recess when the, uh, the, the, the big classics uh, are put on one side and we have the, the big tours coming up. Uh, one quick word, by the way, we do have on Eurosports on uh, the 1st of May, so if you're taking time off to go and vote, make sure you nip back and switch on the telly because uh, that day we're going to be bringing you the Henniger Tour, which I don't think has been printed in all the uh, uh, old magazines and uh, all the uh, information out there probably relates to some other sport. But we'll be on air, and I think it's in the afternoon, maybe four or five o'clock in the afternoon, but try and pick it up in your national newspapers. Well, there we are on the climb then. They come up through the Boschenfriesen uh, to catch those three riders. A group of, uh, what, two, four, six, seven riders going off the front, Boltz, Peron, uh, Canzaneri, uh, Van Heift and Herve. The gap, though, doesn't look too much at the moment. And by the size of that uh, race down there, you can see every reason that they might well pull back that uh, group that's now taken over the lead following the, uh, uh, that three-man uh, early attempt to stay away. So it's still anybody's race. And uh, in there, of course, we've got people like Museo, Siandri's in there as well. Uh, Zanini, last year's victor, is also riding today. And I somehow think that uh, we're likely to find in the last 50 kilometres or so, this race could well blow apart at the seams. There we are, just going through the champion of Holland, uh, Den Bakker. But the Dutch are going to be hoping, I think, that the best they can do is to get Sonnenson up in a position to uh, take over the leader's jersey. He rides from Rabobank, the big uh, Dutch bank, who are one of the major sponsors of cycling in Holland, or TBM is the other one. So the best I think the Dutch can hope for today in this classic race of theirs has been won by less than five times by Jan Raas, who is the uh, director sportive of the Rabobank team is that they can get uh, Sorensen to take that leader's jersey in the World Cup at the end of the race today. Well, I hope you stay with us on Eurosport for the action coming up as the riders move in toward the finish at Maastricht in the Amstel Gold. The main pack in full flight here, trying to chase down a breakaway group of uh, maybe about eight or so riders, which includes... Uh, uh, the winner of the Tour de France, Bjorn Rees, as well. And now I think the action is really uh, underway here. You can see that uh, on the front, the MG Techno Gym team looking after the interests of the leader on the World Cup, uh, Bartoli, and now trying to do all they can to pull back that little breakaway group at the front. 
The field slimmed down somewhat. There are 25 teams started this morning on the race. They've been going up and down these bergs, the, the Obachsberg, the Kutenberg, the Valkenberg. And as I go through here, um, I just say thank you to my friends at the Vernon family in Ham Halif Halifax because we have the tour of Flanders going up and down the bergs and uh, they sent me a little drawing of the bear riding in the tour of Flanders and they've also sent me another berg, yes? Battenberg, a jolly nice cake and a little bear's riding through some gaily coloured lumps here which is obviously Battenberg cake, not have a, and the bear's saying, oh no, I've got marzipan stuck all over my wheels they're not all locked up yet are they thanks indeed and the cake was delicious there we are back to the race then that breakaway group we'll hope to pick them up in just a, a moment or so there we can see that on that particular point 24th climb of the day they have in fact got 29 climbs in all to do and the field here on this uh, very narrow section of the race one thing about this particular race it uh, is very much uh, down the country lanes and it zigzags backwards and forwards and I suppose if you were a surgeon and you were doing a stomach operation you'd say it looks like some of the intestines it's all over the place a squiggly uh, little sets of roads that the spectators can move backwards and forwards and we're up then with that uh, leading group in there Joe Plancart at the moment Giannetti, Seberg, uh, Van Bonn, uh, Bjorn Rees uh, are some of the riders that are actually in this little group at the front they are up just on key you can see the names coming up on your screen Taffy did a wonderful ride to get up there, by the way. And Rees, the way he jumped across, because Giannetti uh, roots for the first to start going away, and then Taffy went across to join them. Then uh, uh, Rees did the same thing. And Rees is riding so strong, it's unbelievable. For a man who normally saves his strength for the Tour de France, uh, something tells me, says he, tapping the side of his nose, that if you want to look for a likely winner today, Rees might be going to say, look, I'm just not an indirect, I just don't ride for one race. If I feel good, I'll go and have a go at it. That's him just uh, last but one in the uh, field at the moment. The fellow at the back there was Joe Plankart in the black and red uh, Lotto colours. And by the way, Lotto had a success during the week, if uh, you haven't caught up with the news, because th that great sprinter, uh, Abdul Djaparov, uh, took the victory in the event on uh, during the week. He was ahead of uh, Saki. Uh, Les Kure was in third spot. So Abdul Djaparov has now got himself a victory to his credit and good luck to him because he's been struggling a bit recently so Lotto with their tails up at the moment and they've got one man in that breakaway group I think that might be John Tarn in the back there by the way the Colón Verado that yellow uh, jersey with the, the white sorry the red stripes on the shoulders he went away in that early break and then got absorbed and probably spat out the back is it nice and green by the way drop us at the old rain has done wonders hasn't it for the garden and so you can you can put your nose out the front door and smell how good the earth is, is with a drop of rain on it. And so it is in Holland too. The poor old tulips have been hanging on their throats because there's been so little rain as well in Holland that the, the flowers have been struggling somewhat. Oh, by the way, uh, I was sad to see in the papers the other day that an edge dog, hedgehogs, um, are struggling too in the dry conditions because they're coming out of hibernation and there just aren't enough bugs and things for them to eat and they can't uh, dig down into the earth either because it's so hard and bats too, they, they come out during the day, it's been so hot when they go back to roost at night, it's been so cold in Great Britain they've been struggling as well, so an unusual climatic conditions we've had so far this year and what you're seeing now by the way on the roads here this rain is only just enough to put a little tiny thin film of water on the top and when they're going through these towns where the diesel cars stop at traffic lights and so on then it leaves a little film on top and these are the worst conditions for bike racing you may remember in the Tour de France last year in Holland when the riders were falling off left, right and centre when there was just a fall of rain on the top of the diesel so keep your fingers crossed as the bird goes in front of us there uh, these lads all stay upright. He's in the yellowish colours riding for Mercatoni. That's Giannetti on the front right now. And uh, Giannetti, who surprised a lot of people by winning this race in 1995 when he also won the Ladies Bastogne Age and moved on to take the uh, uh, World Cup jersey in for recess whilst we had the big tours. He's now done just the right thing to go away with this particular group at the moment and that's a good move as far as he's concerned. Mosea has also been in that group as well, looking very strong indeed. Perhaps it's his day too. We shall see. With Lisha Pilsner.
the MG Technogym team in full flight at the moment, trying to pull back that breakaway group, which has a lead. Last time we saw it, about 1 minute and 35 seconds. What you're seeing on the screen now is the also-rans. I shouldn't say, because some have been riding very hard indeed to keep the race together on behalf of their team leaders. They've now decided they're heading up because they actually circuits round through Maastricht and comes back again to finish uh, after one big lap uh, by going out into Belgium of all places. We're right down in the southeastern corner of Holland and to make it interesting they're going to uh, go in and out of, uh, of Belgium as well. We're now back up with the leading group. Lovely cast on the right hand side. And this fellow here by the way in the red jersey with the white cross. Yes, you know it is, don't you? Bjorn Rees, the champion of Denmark and he's in that group. My apologies, by the way, I said that uh, Moser was in it. Moser was in the group before this one, that uh, after the Keltenberg with 71 k's to go, it got caught on the Coburg, and it was Reese who went across there uh, to join up with Giannetti and Rooks, and Moser dropped back a bit, and in fact, Taffy, it's his teammate who's in this group at the moment on behalf of the Mafé team, who's been sitting near the back, I suppose, waiting for Mazzeo to come up. But this fellow, Reese here now on your screens, has been looking very, very strong indeed. And he's actually, I understand, uh, looking forward to uh, a three more years contract with the telecom team. Um, we'll have to see how he gets on, but uh, certainly Denmark at the moment is getting very strong in cycling. There's been a new team announced in Denmark, uh, just a, a total pro team of Danish pro riders, and it's going to be called, for some reason, the, the Jack Jones team. Don't ask me why. <laughs> it sounds like a pop singer, doesn't it? But Jack Jones team, that's been on the road next year. And uh, I don't think I'll lure uh, Bjorn Rees to join them, but that shows you the strength of Danish cycling where they've got about the same number of pro riders or uh, elite riders we've got in Great Britain, but we don't seem to have the same quality in depth that they've got. Matthew Man on your screen right now. I mean, the population, well, about five and a half million people can produce a full pro team next year. Good luck to them. Of course, Sorensen, who's uh, signing again, also for three years with the Rabobank team uh, from Denmark. And it looks like, uh, uh, has he got a puncher? John Reese has been making it look so easy so far. There's some reason he's going back. Because on his narrow road, the team cars can't get up to them. Can't see what he's doing here. Fede Gart has just up in front of him, the man who won the Leeds Classic there in the black shorts for Ros Lotto. That's Joe Plankard in the black and red. He's obviously having some problem here, and I can't see what it is. It's a bike race, not a horn-blowing competition, gentlemen. I think these guys got cloth ears the way they hit the horns. There goes the TVM car. By the way, I'm sure you'd all like uh, to send best wishes to the recovery of Arnold Redan who had that terrible crash uh, in the... Well, about two weeks ago now. They're 145 the gap. It's about the same as it was before. I understand he's had to have lots of operations on his arm. He was going to be the assistant team manager of the... TVM team as from the 1st of May, but a terrible crash. They've had to do bone grafts and all sorts of things to put him back in order. That's a TVM on the right-hand side. So, Omrik, wherever you are, all your friends in Britain will wish you the best in recovery. And also, by the way, talking about the sick and afflicted and, and broken bones, um, whilst we now see that Reese is getting back in his little uh, group. I went to see Jack Lauterwasser yesterday. As, here we are, <laughs> back with Reese, who seems to be not very happy. It's his back wheel, I think. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there he goes. Quick change. Or is he not? Oh, don't take the cameras away now. Go on, Mr. Director. Back down there. It's 1.45 as a gap. And he's not happy. Taff, Taff is having a go at him as well. What on earth's going on? <laughs> well, I understand we've got Rudy Pevenage on the line at the moment. Really, what's on earth been the problem here with Bjorn Rees? Ready? 
We don't have him. OK, we'll come back to you later on. OK. Oh, we've got him back with a front wheel change now. <laughs> He's probably out of the car. So we're going back and forth to team cars here. So we're trying to chat to Rudy Pevenage as well about Reese's prospect today. Because he's looking very strong indeed. Quite a swift change. It'll take them all about 10, 15 seconds to make a change like that. But this lot up in front might now say, let's get rid of Reese because... Um, he might be a threat. He'd been riding so strongly so far that presumably now they won't hang about for him. And I think perhaps what he was trying to do in talking to Taffy was to see whether Taffy might help him back the bunch. I don't know. There was some consternation in the camp there as far as Reese was concerned. Now he's got to chase back through. And if you look down the line here, there are one or two cars uh, behind uh, this little group here, which should help Reese. There's not much wind today. Um, it's not too bad for one on his own. He's looking so strong. It depends on what his aims and ambitions are uh, today. And, it's a and there we are. So that's a, a quick look back at the races so far that we've had and the victors are on the screen there. Look how many chambers. Zabel, Sorensen, Gaidon and Bartoli. One from Germany, one from Denmark, one from France and one from Italy. Who's going to be the victor today? Will it be the Danish rider? Can he get back? Reese really does have a job on his hand now on this uh, uh, World Cup round five in the Amstel Gold race after that uh, change of a front wheel. And he's now, you can see, going up through the cars here. There's enough cars here for him to get behind. And you might say, well, that's cheating. It isn't actually, because he can't help having a puncture. And he'll use everything he can do to get back again. And now he's going up here, and he's going to get back again. So thank goodness for that. I don't think the strength he's been showing today that, uh, in reality, uh, he should have been shelled out the back by a puncture such as that one. There's Berg having a quick word with him as well. Now, interesting about by Mercaton Uno, by the way, Pantani is not riding today, and he's normally the number one for Mercaton Uno, uh, as Berg's arm went up there. There's been a bit of a falling out uh, in the camp. Right, I understand we have Rudy Pevenage on the telephone line at the moment. Rudy, today, it looks to me that Bjorn Rees is very strong indeed. I thought he was putting his whole plans to the Tour de France. What's got into him today? Hello? Rudy, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, Rudy, can you hear me? Okay. Well, we, we seem to have problems at the moment. He's down at the finishing line, and we're having some trouble just picking him up on the uh, on the intercom there. So I have to try and do that later on. Sorry about that. Two good people back there. We'll try and bring you live action, and I'd like to know what's going on with Reese today because he really has uh, woken this race up, and it's good to see him back riding so strongly. And if gosh, if we get a, uh, another victor today uh, from uh, you know a change in the running order, what 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 will that be? Well, in that at the moment, 123, just very clearly on your screens. Uh, that's uh, young Van Bon from the Rabobank team. He must be looking for some success today. And I was talking about this fellow in the yellow here, uh, Zerberg. There's been a falling out with Pantani. The, the team are saying, hey, we worked very hard for you. Leave it too late. Y uh, you're not quite getting the results. And so Zerberg has taken over as team leader today, and Pantani's not riding today. What else do you expect when the poor blokes had broken legs for the best part of 18 months? And he said he's not quite 100%, but he's doing the best he can. So he's been chopped from the race today. Look at this. Reese going yet again. And that's him. That's how he took off. That's the strength of this man. Absolutely unbelievable the power he's been showing today. Something else, that man. Absolutely superb. Despite the problems, he's in there. He's having a go now. Tremendous performance then by uh, Bjorn Reese. And I'd love to have spoken to Rudy Pevenage about uh, the way he's riding. And really, for a man who's setting his sights on the Tour de France, I'm, I'm glad to see this, by the way, and no disrespect to Big Miguel Indurain, who only arrived for one race. We thought uh, Reese was going to do that, but here he is on this uh, show now, having a big go on our screen, and uh, I wonder if he can stay away. We're going to take a short break. Hang on to see if he stays out there. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> 
have it. The gap 125 between that breakaway group and the main field. But what's not shown on your telly right now is that Bjorn Rees has gone down the road. He's on his own. He's going like a man possessed. There's about 32 kilometres or thereabouts to go to the finish. That's 20 miles. And here he is on your screen now, riding absolutely superbly. 15 seconds lead for this man. If you've been tuned in, watching the programme so far this afternoon, you'll see that he had that puncture. He's got back on his bike. He caught the leading group. He's going away now. Look at him. Absolutely full of drama. We've not seen him ride like this since the Tour de France last year. Remember when he went up there to Sestrier and took over the yellow jersey, that written all over his face that he was going to win the Tour de France. And written all over his face right now is the effort that he's putting in to win this Amstel Gold. Well, it is turning to a dog's dinner of a day. Awful condition for bike racing. That certainly will slow down the peloton and work in this man's favour. Well, there he is on your screen. You can see how much effort he's putting into this one. And... Uh, well, keep your fingers crossed that he can stay out there. I've been jumping around a bit because this race has been all over the place since we came on air. And I was talking, in fact, about uh, an accident to my good friend Jack Lortowasser. Out there in Great Britain, many of you will know the name Lortowasser. He was the first man to cover more than 240 miles in 12 hours in the time trial. Way back in the, what, late 1920s, I suppose. Uh, he's in hospital at Royal United Hospital in Bath, in Pierce Ward. He's broken his leg, he's had another operation on it. And there we are, 30 kilometres to go. And Jack, we all wish you well on your recovery. I had a chance to see him yesterday. He's quite chirpy at, uh, what, coming up to 93 years of age, the bold Jack Lortowasser, in this coming June. So. We wish you well on your recovery and a happy 93rd birthday when you get to June as well. Another birthday today, it's uh, Amy Davidson's 26th birthday. Thank you, Alan, for letting me know that one from uh, Open Road up in Stockport, publisher of the Encyclopedia and Bike Culture Quarterly. And I hope you're having a happy birthday today. Will you be celebrating Bjorn Reese's victory? Keep your fingers crossed, all your supporters of the man. They're after him now. This race is now really blown apart the scenes, 30 k's to go. Taffy at the back, had his team manager come up uh, whilst we had an ad break, he, he spoke to Taffy, I think he's still saying, hey, lie doggo, lie doggo, Moselle might come up to you, but uh, the moment Taffy sitting here, not doing his usual workhorse job on the front. And this is the man they're chasing down. Sorry about the pictures that the sort of mess on the screens about. Don't go and get your chamois leather and try and clean your telly sets. This is coming off the, the cameras. Live as it happens, the Amstel Gold. And I'm having a quick look back now to see if we've had a Danish victor in the past in this race, and I can't spot one. The answer is no. The Dutch have had 15 victories, of which five went to Jan Raas. The Belgians have had nine victories. Uh, two to France, two to Switzerland, one to Australia, Phil Anderson, uh, one to Germany, and one to Italy. More instructions then to Taffy here, sitting at the back. Ginetti also hanging on in just there, the man who won it a couple of years ago, not doing much. And here comes the MG Techno Gym on the front. They've got to drive this one forward. It interests the man in the white jersey, who's equal on points in the World Cup. And I presume that because he was the last winner of the last race, they've given him the World Cup uh, white jersey because he and Sorensen are equal on points. And you see the gap then between Reese and the Peloton 145, and inside 20 uh, miles to go, that still could be caught. But we've got some pretty tough conks ahead of us. And this group isn't too interested, I think, in working together. Paul at the back here, I think he's hanging on for a grim death at the moment. That's Van Pedigam of TVM. Well, he's had quite a good season so far, and here comes his team out to have a quick word with him. It's all right sitting in the car, isn't it? shouting at him. <laughs> I think that's Case Prem telling him what, how to get on with it. Case, another of the old TI rally team from way back. 
Um, and of course they dominated this race for so many years to the TI Rally or derivatives. Jan Ras win this race five uh, times. In fact, people like uh, Jelly Knateman and uh, Jack Hanegraaff, uh, all members of the TI Rally team, or in case with Phil Anderson, also went on the Panasonic team, which developed from the rally team. So uh, they don't much know what this uh, part of the world is like, but this man here is just riding like somebody else. Look at him. is out the front, hammering himself into the ground. There's a group of riders in between him and this bunch here. The, the MG Techno Gym team are chasing like crazy to put um, Bartoli in with a shout to get some more points in the uh, in the World Cup because... I'll just give a quick rundown again if you didn't see the start of the programme. Uh, Bartoli of the MG uh, team has got 164 points. Sorensen has 164. Gaydon, not riding today, has 100. And Sabel riding today, has 100 points. Mazzeo, 95. Plancott, 94, and so on. And looking down the list here, Reese on his own at the moment. I can't see him at all on the top end of the list. So he hasn't been scoring so far. He doesn't usually ride the classics, you know, with his teeth wrapped around the handlebars, but he's doing today. Well, when the bold meat hung up his wheels, everybody knew a new era was coming, and uh, we've had so many new riders come through from Spain, starting to go for things, and I thought that, oh, we might find with Rhys that he's going to do what Indrain did and just ride to win the Tour de France. And here he is now, riding the classics like bold Mick never, ever did do, and this is great for bike riding. I talk about bike riding, some of the new young lads on the scene, uh, Colin Wilcock phoned up to tell me about some of the riders from the Dave Rain of Fund. Uh, uh, Charlie Vegalus from the Vendor U. It's going to be his 19th birthday this week. In the Pont Chateau two-day race, he was twice second and won overall. He's also going to ride the trophy to Grand Prix. Justin Clark had a second place in Belgium, riding with the giant uh, amateur team. Jamie Burrows in Italy may ride the amateur Giro as well. And uh, so lots of those young lads have been helped by the Dave Rain of Fund are out there riding for the interests of Great Britain, and we hope to see them in the pro ranks before long. Today, the only rider we've got from Great Britain in this race, Max Chandry, back in the main field. <laughs> now, that's interesting. You look like the... Uh, neutral service cars dropped in behind him at the moment. We've got a couple of neutral service cars in the, or th three all sold in the race, and it looks like they've dropped one in behind him. What power he's putting down today! So they're splitting behind, the group is now under pressure, trying to follow after Reese at the moment. I mentioned briefly, by the way, about the Dave Rain of Fun. Uh, I'm busily trying to get one of the T-shirts that uh, the Bromley video people sent me, uh, commemorating the 100th year of the Paris Bay, signed by as many Paris Bay winners as I can get, so we can auction it uh, up there in Bradford at the back end of the year to provide more funds to uh, encourage more riders to go, or to support more riders to go across to ride in Europe. Well, we're part of Europe, aren't we, Great Britain? We're on the continent. That strip of water makes it so much that we're in Ireland. God knows we've had some problems this week, haven't we, trying to get across with the, the, the fishermen's blockade. And uh, we've had more than our fair tr share of trouble at Eurosport, too, getting backwards and forwards. This is the group chasing. Zberg on the front. And Pettigrew going through, then on the far side, Fedegato and suddenly Van Bon takes off. Van Bon's going, but look, the man has not been doing much work here in the little grey shorts. Giannetti has been following the wheels, as does Taffy at the moment, and Plank at the back. They're not going to do much to pull... Uh, 
reach back, I don't think, while they're jumping around like this. They have to work very concerted action, taking in turns. And right now, I don't quite know who's in charge of this group. Somebody usually comes along as a senior figure and starts wagging fingers and making them uh, know that they have some work to do. In fact, my mistake, it wasn't Van Pettigum, it's Lord Rooks here, R-O-U-X, Rooks. I thought he didn't look like Van Pettigum when I looked at his face as he just went past us there. And he's in fact Lord Rooks in that group for TVM. And he's still got a 30-second lead. Sperg's gone away, Ginetti's after him. Taffy closes the gap, Plankart's on his wheel. Rooks closes the gap too. Van Bon here struggling for Rabobank. Ferigato drops on his wheel. Ferigato starts to move across the right-hand side. The man who won that Leeds Classic went on to take the Championship of Zurich now, has to close down that gap. Who's stuffed? Plankart can't chase. Rooks can't. Van Bon can't. Taffy doesn't want to. This could be the split. Well, Jeanette has been waiting for this one. He wasn't doing too much work and suddenly He's moved off the front. They may be able to catch up with this man, they may not. Goodness me, if he goes away and gets this victory today, that's, that will be over 30-odd kilometres he's done on his own on the front. John Reese hammering away at the front here. So two Swiss riders. Sberg and Ginetti about to be joined by Fadigato. I think that's what we need, right about three or four, if we're going to catch Reese at the front. Only 22 kilometres to go. Sberg has been running so strongly today. ginetti has got, I think, a bit of reserve. It really is going to be a cliffhanger at the moment. Looking at the chasing group behind Reese, that's how Zeberg took off first of all to go down the road. He was swiftly followed by Gennetti. Ferigato closed the gap down as well. That puts these three men chasing after Bjorn Reese. And the main peloton, something like about a minute and a half down. None of these damp and dismal conditions. Glorious weather for the flowers and jolly old hedgehogs will enjoy it too because the poor things have been dry and thirst out there. But nevertheless, it's not very nice conditions to bike race under. But I think a lot of people will be saying, thank you very much indeed. And all the gardeners out there will be sort of looking up at the sky and saying, let's have a drop more of this. But as far as the bike ride is concerned, you get that spray up the back wheel. And these chaps here riding with their chamois leathers inside their, their, their shorts, it gets nice and well and truly soaked. Fortunately, it's not sort of cold day today, so your legs don't go numb, but you can get very, very nasty conditions if you get all this, this gunge coming at you. And of course, you see here, Reese with his glasses on too. The other thing comes flying off the wheel, so a little bit of grit. If you get one of those stuck inside your, your eyes, it's not very pleasant at all. Not ideal conditions at all, but thank goodness it could be a bit colder and a bit more miserable. But um, they warmed up. We didn't get the rain until the last, uh, what, 45 kilometres or so. So they can stand it at the moment. Shouldn't be too bad. Funny about cycling, rain doesn't stop play, nor does the snow for that matter. We've been in some very difficult conditions. It looks like they might get back, these, this little group of four. And I thought those three in front had got a power to stay away, but they're going to be hauled back in again, which will be beneficial, I think, to Reese because they're now going to sit up and take notice and discover who's the strong. Look who did the work, Taffy. Taffy's going through, and there he goes on the left hand side, he's away. Good tactics. As soon as they caught those three, they will probably begin to feel the effort in their legs. Taffy took off. What a man. 
came good at the back end of last year with some superb rides, particularly that one when he won the Tour of Lombardy. Of course, he smarted on the fact that in the Paris Bay in 1996, he was instructed to take third spot. And now Tuffy is riding as only Tuffy can ride. I love this character. He's prepared to have a go. He's, he's a workhorse for the team. And, and once they say to him, OK, ride your own race, it's your chance to have a go, he's got so much ability. But he's such a dedicated team man. He works, he toes back the, the bunch up the brakes for his team leaders. He leads his team leaders out. But once in a while when his team leader, like Mazzeo today, is perhaps struggling a little bit, he's been allowed a bit of freedom and he's off. So we've got two very strong men in action now. Braun Reese down the road and Taffy trying to close the gap down. What a year he had last year. Apart from that Tour of Lombardy success, he won the Tour of Lazio, he won the Paris Brussels. Fourth overall in the World Cup, fourth in the Japan World Cup. And that third in the Paris Roubaix, which I think spurred him on to greater things during the rest of the year. Keep your fingers crossed for him. He's been in this sport for an awful long time. They started riding competitive cycling at the age of 10 and this man also here if you looking in uh, issues of cycle sport for instance back in the UK you'll see pictures of the young uh, Bjorn Rees on a little tiny bicycle so I had a very very early day, in, a day indeed and he got him young in this sport but my goodness you've got to have tenacity and you've got to have a lot of sort of enthusiasm for riding a bike to stay in it as long as they have to do these top pros So Tuffy uh, chasing down, and now they're jumping all over the place to try and pull him back. And here we are, Tuffy going, they're coming up to him. Had a nice letter from uh, Mark Coley, who's just an ordinary cyclist, doesn't belong to a club. He said, I don't know much about equipment, gear ratios, no. I just understand the exhaustion and the stamina of these bike riders. And that's what you're seeing on the screen now. So thanks for your letter, then, Mark Coley. Up that uh, article in cycling wrote to me from Rowley Regis up there in the Midlands. That's not far from where they put the pig on the wall to watch the band go by. I'm not quite sure whether it's Dudley or Quarry Bonk, but I know the old legend up in the block country was they put the pig on the wall to watch the band go by. So who is the band going to play for today? This lot all splintered all over the place. Remember, while they're breaking up like this, though, the big bunch is behind. MG are chasing for uh, Bartoli. Reese is down the road. Tap is after him. So Berg's trying to go, and these one man after the other going down the road could well in fact make it difficult uh, for them to have a concerted control of the race and the big bunch might swallow them yet but Reese has done a tremendous ride the 27th climb of the day and it's Reese out there still hang on I'll tell you how far it is for the finish <laughs> Helen Bay Two hundred and forty two kilometers covered in the race so far. Of the two hundred and fifty eight in total. You do a quick subtraction, I'm getting too carried away with the race at the moment. I think that's sixteen Ks to go. Some ten miles left between Reese and according to my little check on the results of the Amstel goal since uh, 1966 it could be the first Danish victory if you can just hang on out there he's been chased down by Taffy by Zberg, by a group of disparate uh, pirates trying to plunder the success from Bjorn Rees who went away with about 32 kilometers to go to the finish he's now done about 10 miles on his own everybody here is enthusiastic for his performance the back here struggling to stay in every one of these rides he's dying a thousand deaths it really has become a war of attrition man after man trying to get up to Reese. what damage he's done this is him on the front 
And quick, before it disappears over the top for the next climb, let me just give you some results from the weekend. All your British followers back there. The Circuit des Montes de Livradois, uh, Chris Newton won that one. And in the Tour de Canton de Dun le Palestel, Roger Hammond within six spot. Local news for you people back there. I like to give some encouragement to the Brits riding over in, uh, in on the continent to make more come across it, because this is where the sport is. Just look at it. Each and every one of them is time trialling himself into the ground. There's a bird, there's Taffy, and down the road where that helicopter is, is Bjorn Reese. Oh, sorry, it's Giannetti. <laughs> you take your eyes off the stream and it all changes yet again. <laughs> You've got some little apples. Speed on this descent. Absolutely superb. Watch him clip the bends, go this side, go that side. Well, I said 16 kilometres to go about 1k down the road, so I'm I'm slightly out of view on Reese. Sorry about that, Sunshine, but he's got on the front of his handlebars there a computer, but it'll tell him how far he's gone, how far it is to go. Actually, um, in the, well, the Tour of Flanders, when Jalabert blew up, he said he ate eaten all his food um, and thought he was nearer to the finish than he actually was when he consumed all his food because his computer on the handlebars had ceased to function and he underestimated the distance to the finish. Now, I find that strange because when you start out the bike race, uh, in the days when you didn't have computers that uh, told you how far you'd gone, uh, you actually would look at your watch and you'd say, hey, I'm in a bike race for four and a half hours, five and a half hours, seven hours, whatever the case may be, and you would actually do it by, by time. And I thought it was strange when Jalabert blamed his computer for eating too early in the race because his computer wasn't functioning. I thought that if it goes on the blink, Perhaps he hadn't got a wristwatch, I don't know, but I thought a wrist was, uh, wristwatch was a very important thing to have. Hello, Taffy, Genetti, Zeberg, and Luke's. All back together. And again, I can't understand why they don't... There are four chaps here, somebody must take charge. I mean, there are two from Switzerland here, they're all from different teams, obviously, but if they're going to catch this fellow, they've got to say, right, we'll do you know, 60 metres each, on the change, on the shout, Get on the wheel and ride. Who's going to take charge? Taffy out of thought. Oh, Ginetti, he's got more experience, because they've seen off these two. Van Bonnen and Plankart now. I think they've got screwed. Yep. See, see how Plankart's arms have gone straight? It's when you put your arms down like that and your head begins to rock, you're really struggling. He's died a thousand deaths here, so I think those four could well stay away, but will they work together? I don't know. This two-man chasing group, somehow I think they've not going to see those, uh, those four up in front. Uh, well, he said, OK, he's prepared to go. They're prepared to work to try and catch back uh, the four men up uh, in front of them, and the one man is still out in the lead. Van Bon here at the back, Plankart just up in front of him. Van Bon did quite, oh, you are, this is our little four-round group. Van Bon did quite a useful ride during the week. I'm just going to dig up my notebook here while you watch him take this corner, chasing after our lead at the moment. Uh, Bjorn Reese, who took off for what, some 32 kilometres to go. Around about, what, 12, 14 kilometres left in this race so far. Still looking very good indeed. Ah, 
Van Bonnet. I've got it whilst we're watching Reese at the moment. I hope he hasn't gone away. It was a Vindal Vindal race. Let's shove on the frontier Van Bonnet. Was second, in fact, behind Blylevens. There were 21 riders in the sprint finish. We've covered the Vindal Vindal on Eurosport in the past as well. Blylevens for TVM won it. Van Bonnet was second. The Rabobank then had Piskes in the third spot. The Houten in fourth. Uh, so out the 21 riders in the sprint, they managed to get to second, third and fourth. Well, the man who's been keeping his powder dry until this very wet day today is Bjorn Rees. At the moment, it looks like he's not going to be part of the sprint finish if he keeps this up. I can't remember the time we've been covering the Amstel Gold We've had such a long, lone breakaway of this, and I don't have time to go back through all my copies of cycling I bring with me of all the results of the recent years. Let's just see how far out somebody went for a, a long, lone break like this one. They usually wait until much close towards the finish, but uh, to go um, with over 30 k's to go, and the way he took off after that puncture was just something out of the top drawer. Now, Chasers, I think, I think, I'm waiting for some more time checks, I think if they keep a concerted action going, they might, might, might just be able to pull that, that gap back a bit, because some very strong punters in this one. It's a Berg at the back, from Mokoto Nuno, and it's 44 seconds, and so far they've given up going back to the main pack. That's Giannetti peeling off the front. I'll just do a quick recap, by the way, whilst we've now got this uh, situation with Reese down the road, 44 seconds away from these four, as we look at the Sahara <laughs> Desert in the midst of Holland, and what's happened so far, uh, in case you're just coming a bit late and switched on and discovering Eurosport giving you cycling. Uh, we started off on the uh, 258 kilometres this morning in the Amstel Gold Race, the 32nd in the series, and we had an early breakaway group for riders. Three men went away after 50 kilometres had been covered. That's about 30 miles or so. That was uh, Bessie of the casino team, uh, Roschioli of the Azix team. He took that stage victory into uh, Marseille in the Tour de France, what must be three, four years ago now. Amazing character. He took off uh, with uh, Bessie. And John Tarlem, who promised a lot but never quite delivered. I mean, he might thump me for that, but he rides for the Colorado golf team on their little valley bicycles. And those three chaps went down the road after 71 k's, they had a lead of one minute. After 127 kilometres, they had a lead of uh, seven minutes and 20. And then the MG and Telecom chased it down. Interesting, see, my notes here said MG and Telecom chased it down. I couldn't see why Telecom were chasing it down. I thought that uh, they were trying to set this thing up for Zabel, who's riding for the, the Telecom team. But all the time, they must have known that this fellow uh, was going to be on form because Reese wasn't amongst my selections uh, for today at all. So anyway, they chased down, and by the time they got to 174 kilometres with 84 k's to go... Oops, steady, hang on. OK, I understand that we've got Rudy Pevenage at the moment on the line. Uh, Rudy, uh, if you can hear me, this performance... Hello, Rudy, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Rudy? Oh, Rudy. We are, we're watching uh, Bjorn Rees ride a, a, a magnificent performance. Was this planned today? I've not seen him ride like this all season. Ah, oh, what a shame. <laughs> um, I'll talk back to the control room then. Hello. Hello. Hello, Rudy, can you hear me? Oui, mais j'entends toujours le voix du commentaire français. OK. Bien sûr. Allô. Allô. Uh, so 
sorry about that. Rudy Pevenage was getting Laurent Fignon and uh, Patrick Chasse rather than me, and I'd have great difficulty speaking to him in French, translating it back into English from Rudy Pevenage. So I won't know yet whether this man actually was planning to do the ride he's doing today or not. We'll have to wait till it's all over and done with. Sorry about that, you're good people back at home, because we've gone over the River Mars at the moment, over this wonderful bridge here, and cutting back in towards the finish, they loop round um, about three kilometres round the uh, a, a finishing circuit, and the way that Reese is going at the moment, it looks like it could well make it. So I put you in the picture, we had three men away at uh, 174 kilometres, they were caught, then we had another attack with Volts, Perron, uh, Casanieri, Van Heift and Hervé, they were caught after about another 10 kilometres, a group went after them and then took off from the front, Museo, Chiandri, Yakimov, Bartoli and Van Pettigam, and then when they caught, as mean they caught, pow, Reese went away and joined up with uh, Gennetti and Rux, so, and from them we've got this little group you see on his... Uh, hello, can you hear me, Rudy? Yeah, very good, yeah. Thank you. Rudy, the performance yeah. today by Bjorn Reese, just tell us something about it. The English viewers would like to know, was this planned, or is it just, just something he decided to do? Yeah, Bjorn, this morning, uh, when we have a uh, talk about the race, he was very... In a, he talked that he would uh, make the race to win, Together with Eric Tabel and uh, now uh, we, we, we know that uh, Bjarne was in a very good shape the last week and uh, what he is doing now is very extraordinary. It is really because I thought that he was riding to go for the Tour de France this year. This is something unusual. Is he trying to prove a point? Is he trying to show that he isn't just a one-race man? Yeah, but I think uh, already in the uh, in the last year uh, he was very good in uh, in the classics in um, Amstel and Lutti. But uh, last week in Lutti he had a little bit uh, he was a little bit uh, hill. But yep. uh, this, this week he, he could train uh, uh, very good and uh, it was uh, very good weather in Luxembourg. So uh, he was coming to the Amstel with a good uh, very good condition at 100 percent. Rudy, just one point before we go back to my commentary. What is um, Bjorn Rees' next objective? What's he going to ride from now on in between now and the Tour de France? When can we next see him in action? I don't, I don't understand who's the question. Uh, when, which is next, what is Bjorn Rees' next event? When does he ride again? No, we will make no ending of tour in, uh, in Germany uh -huh. and then keeping him in the in uh, Switzerland, uh -huh. and then he will make uh, three weeks, uh, not holidays, but he will do it a little bit, uh, he will take off for three weeks, and then he makes uh, Bicicleta Vasca, Mide Libre, Dauphiné, and then the Tour. We look forward to seeing him in action, Rudy. We keep our fingers crossed. I know in Great Britain a lot of people support this man on the street now. He's doing a wonderful ride. Thank you for your comments, Rudy. Thanks for watching, Dave. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. bye, -bye. Nice to hear them from Rudy Pevenage, and nice to know that Bjorn Reese is prepared to have a go. And I hope you people back at home enjoyed the uh, chat there with Rudy Pevenage and uh, his uh, comments that this man today decided it was his day. And my goodness, he's got five miles to go, and he could well make it. So with uh, just less than five kilometers, to, five miles to go inside the last eight kilometers, this is an unbelievable show of power from. Jan Rees, on your screen, the Tour de France winner, showing that he's also a great classics performer. Well, come on, boy, he says, you catch me and they can't. And that's a tremendous drive of power. And these four men have been trying to pull him down, pull him back, and they just haven't done that so far. So really, the race is over for people behind, and it's going to take a bit of doing, by the way, because we haven't gone back to the main group to see uh, where are the uh, two men contesting the World Cup. Because whilst you're watching the Amstel Gold unfold in front of your very eyes live on Eurosport, we also have a round of the World Cup round five, where Bartoli this morning started out with Sons, and both 164 uh, points in total. Uh, Rees is not in contention at the moment. He's way down the list on the... Uh, uh, on my notes here at the moment. So, in fact, um, Bartoli and Sorensen, the, the points go down as far as two points to 24. So, whilst he's having his own private battle here on your screen, live on Eurosport, uh, the, uh, behind the battle for the 
Uh, Jersey in the World Cup will be continued between Bartoli and Sars, and I'll try and pick them up when they come through at the finish of this race, but it's been one of those days today. And this is our little chasing group, we've just switched on. Uh, there's only got four men left at the moment. Ginetti's down there, Zerberg is in there uh, at the moment, together with uh, Lukes and, uh, and Taffy, alongside the River Maas, going in towards Maastricht. Well, it's uh, an amazing old town he's heading into here, by the way. Maastricht dates back to uh, over 2,000 years to the Romans. It's the oldest city in the Netherlands. It's the central point now of the Amstel goal. And up comes the Dutch-sponsored TVM uh, team car here to shout on and encourage young Rooks to do what he can to pull this one back uh, to try and get up to... Uh, beyond reach, but unless he dies a thousand deaths, he's going to get this victory today. 49 seconds it is to Taffy, Ginetti, Zeberg, Alrux. Well, there's so much talk going on with the British election coming up on May the 1st, but by the way, we're covering the Hennigan term. Uh, and I'm going to rush back and place my vote. I may just about get that before polling booth close at 10 o'clock at night. Maastricht, the centre of the big treaty and all the discussions going on about Europe right now. But we're watching uh, the best European cyclists on your screen, on Eurosport. And here, the man from Denmark, Bjorn Rees. Looks like he's going to ride in. He's going to now do the last few kilometres round the little circuit here. He's well away at the front. I'm just looking back quickly at uh, Bjorn Rees to pick up some of his... He's won a to Tour Avenir, stages in the Tour of Italy, uh, obviously Danish champion, uh, stages in Tour de France. I just can't see here at the moment, looking down my list at the moment, that um, he's actually won a classic over the years uh, in the information I've got in front of me. Whoops, steady Bjorn. But he just shows that he has got the power of these. Mainly a man who rides the big tours, takes the distance in his stride, can stand the power and the pain of riding for three weeks, takes stage victories as well. Here we are then on the 29th climb of the day. And this is the chasing group. That's Petersburg. It's the final climb that they've got to go up today. And these four, I think, are going to be battling out just for the second, third and fourth place. 255 kilometres, the Petersburg. The whole total distance of the race today, then, 258. So as far as Reese is concerned, it's going to be a triumphant ride in toward the finish. And there on the right-hand side, the TVM bus, the battle bus it is, with uh, their man here, Arux, just sitting in this little group. Who's going to get second spot? Be careful, lads, we go around this one. Steady on the brakes. Holland, a great country of bicycles. They've got something like about I don't know, one bike for every member of the population. It's an enormous place when it comes to cycling. But of course, 15 million bicycles there are, in fact. And uh, they're a great cycling nation. They've not had the success in this Amstel goal in recent years. The last victory that Holland had was in 1991 when Franz Maassen won the race. He won it that year, just uh, following in the wheel marks of Adrian van der Poel, who won in 1990. Uh, the Royal Call of Honour of the Dutchman that won this race. Jan Raas, five times uh, race winner. Jack Hanegraaff won it. Jerry Kadeta has won it. Stephen Rooks, Joop Zodemuk, uh, Shalyn Eidem, uh, Adi van der Poel and Frans Marsen. But way back in the old days, Adi Den Hertog, Harry Stevens, and of course my good friend, uh, Kenny Kadetaman as well. But the Dutch, as far as they're concerned, not a victory today. But will TVM rider Rooks get a second spot? The crowd along the route, listening on their radios, being told on the loudspeakers of the cars preceding the race of this magnificent effort of uh, Bjorn Rees. Certainly, for somebody to come and destroy the opposition like he's done today, he's shown that he's got superb form. <laughs> if I was the bookies, I'd lower the odds on the chances of him taking the Tour de France. If he can produce this sort of form, it's exactly what he did in the Tour de France on that uh, climb up to... Uh, uh, to Sestriere last year. He took a, a nasty day, a cold day. Hello. We're back here with the leader in the World Cup. That's Bartoli now. At long last, we've gone back to pick up the chasers. And uh, so that's interesting that we've gone back to see them because 
who will take the World Cup jersey into the, what do I call the summer recess at the moment. Uh, Van Bon is there and he's been caught too, so in fact Bartol is coming up fast indeed, this could all change. Reese is on his own, these four men are chasing, but Bartoli, the leader on the World Cup, is coming up very fast indeed, the gap is coming down, and so suddenly Giannetti starts to move to the right-hand gutter and take off. There's still a gap of something like 49 seconds back to uh, uh, this group from Bjorn Rees. There's every reason to think that Rees can stay away from the, uh, the chasers, but uh, Bartoli is coming up very quickly indeed, and here he is now, you can see him coming through. There's a tremendous uh, performance, Brian Holm, I think it is, has just, just gone past him at the moment. And, uh, no, can't because Holm rides a Team Telecom. The, the whole this this race is falling apart the scene, including your, your commentator here, who didn't expect to see Bartoli come pop like a cork out of a bottle, but if uh, he keeps this one up, and if the camera work is right, then he's going away from Sorensen, and he can well reinforce his position as a leader on the World Cup, and there he is at the moment, really opening up a useful gap at the moment. Just had a long Jalabert it is. Yes, now I can see him because our cameras came and picked him up. Jalabert riding in here too, to try and improve his position on the World Cup. Coming in to today's uh, uh, race, Jalabert was in 10th spot with 79 points and they've still got five men up in front of them then to try and climb up a little bit on the overall classification of the World Cup. But certainly Bartoli has done just the right thing and he's towing Jalabert with him. Bartoli, a superb performance that he did to take that victory in the ladies' Baston Liège. Got Jalabert with him. Jalabert finished in second spot. So these two now have buried the hatchet, nodding the other's head. They're just now getting to stuck in to try and pull that gap back. And looking back at Liège, Baston Liège, uh, my apologies that I got the wrong place third, man. I said it was uh, Zanini when in fact it was Colombo. But also just shows you how people can die a thousand deaths because uh, Zula, that was in that final two kilometres with that leading group, dropped back to 41st place overall. There were 40 rides inside one minute when suddenly the hammer went down in the Lays Baston Lays, the whole thing changed. There's going to be no doubt about who's going to win today, but the positions behind could well change. The four men chasing behind Bjorn Rees will have to keep going because Jalabert and Bartoli are coming up. There's no doubt about it. Who's going to ride triumphantly into the finish here? A very, very worthy win of his first ever Grand Classic, the first ever rider from Denmark to win the uh, Amstel goal race and it's Bjorn Rees who went away with some 32 kilometers to go from the finish he just rode away from the group he was with having had the misfortune to puncture he joined up with them uh, like a man taking things easy on a Saturday afternoon ride on his bicycle he then waited till he got his breath back after the puncture and just rode away from them and since then you've seen his face on the telly here he's been trying and trying but now he's recovered his composure he's going to ride in to take a victory in a grand classic, and here are the four men chasing after him. Close that gap down. They're not going to contest the spring as far as Reese is concerned. He's going to ride in to what is certainly uh, one of his best ever single day performances in his life. The winner of the Tour de France is now coming across the line. The background there, uh, to Leo Van Vliet, the race director, is watching the first Dane ever to win the Tour de France, uh, sorry, to win the Amstel Gold. Uh, Tour de France victor showed he can ride classics as well. Bjorn Reese wins the Amstel Gold. There's going to be a sprint then for the, the places behind. Who's got, look at them coming up there. Jalabert's coming up behind as well. He's got tremendous sprint. Can he close the gap down? Bartoli's with him as well. As the Berg in the yellow starts to wind it up. And behind there, Giannetti. None of these four, I'd say, is going to be a great sprinter. And on the right-hand side, zipping away there. Giannetti goes for it. Rooks is on his wheel in the yellow. Uh, in the uh, more costly yellow, it looks like... Uh, a bit of a failure to hold the speed from Zuberg, or can he come back as Taffy starts to wind up a long way out? The man here ought to get second. He's won the great stalwart of bike race. The winner of the Tour of last year is trying hard to take a second spot with a tremendously long run into the line. And can he do it? Yes, Taffy, I think, gets second. Just ahead of Zuberg. I wouldn't like to play second and third, but just behind him uh, came Jalabert and Bartoli. That means Bartoli will keep the World Cup jersey going into the summer recess now. And the big bunch comes thundering down here to see who can take their 
Chamil in the centre looking for a big bunch sprint. That's him right there, the red and black. But he don't think he's got the strength legs or has he? Chamil is starting to ride for the line. He gets it. Chamil just crosses the line ahead of that big pack of riders. But no doubt about who the victor was. He didn't need a sprint. He just rode in after 32 kilometres of long, low never. A brilliant performance then by Bjorn Rees to be the first Danish rider ever to take the 32nd Amstel Gold Race at Maastricht. Well, on uh, Thursday, May the 1st, we're going to have the Henniger turn from Frankfurt. He's going to ride that one as well. I wonder if he'll have the strength left in his legs to take the victory in that one. But I uh, hope you'll join me, David Duffield, for our coverage of that race. But next coming up will be the uh, live tennis. I'm sorry we kept you waiting for it, but I hope those of you who follow tennis will have seen a great race, enjoying what we've seen on Eurosport. Bjorn Rees taking his first big classic victory. It's been a great day on Eurosport for bike racing for me. It's time to say bye-bye.